Did you ever experience something so frightening that you couldn't sleep? Well, if it keeps haunting you and you become scared and are experiencing nightmares and panic attacks during the day and the night and you can't sleep anymore, then you know that you're not just talking about trauma, but you are probably talking about PTSD. So today we are going to talk about the insights and ideas around trauma. And well, trauma basically is something happening, for instance, to the body. So trauma to the body, to the body that's, for instance, what I've had when I twisted my ankle. The mere fact that I twist my ankle uh, related in trauma, I had a torn ligament and a bone shifted. And later on, I had a similar trauma to my knee. And, and now I've got a, a partially ruptured ligament as in, in the front part of my knee. And I also have the same thing uh, when it comes to the kneecap itself. Well, it's not the kneecap, it's the meniscus. So it's the uh, it's where the cartilage is. So today we are going to talk about trauma and especially trauma, which remains there for a longer part of your life. Well, I've looked some things up. Um, because I wanted to make sure that everyone who is watching this can understand what trauma is and what PTSD is. So like I said, trauma can be something physical. physical. So it's like um, something disruptive. That's the easiest way to, um, to explain it. And it can be done both. It can happen both mentally and physically. So the first time, the first few times, well, actually every now and then it still occurs that I got back to that location where I twisted my ankle on a brick. Um, it came back to me what happened. Well, Lee John, let's not. We are here to be, um, to be um, respectful to one another, and well, anyone who gets in and isn't and isn't respectful, you simply get blocked. <laughs> That's the way it is. Okay, so when something happens with major impact and it's a distressing or disturbing experience, that when we experience trauma. So when we go from trauma to experiencing trauma, then people get an idea of what has happened. So I remember one time that I was driving the car and there were eight little ducks and mama duck was there and four little ducks walked with mama planning to cross the highway. And mama said, no, let's return. So mama returned with the four ducks and the other four ducks walked on. Well, guess what? By the time I stopped my car, um, the four ducks were flying there in front of my tire. And I won't explain what they look like, but you get the idea. By the time I, I got to the location where I needed to be, and I, I had to move on straight away. The police directed me off the highway. I didn't have any damage because I um was i i had um i had stopped in time but i couldn't say the same thing for the one behind me and because i always look far ahead i i know in time when to hit the brakes so i usually do it <laughs> earlier than the one behind me does and probably earlier than the one before me does but by the time i i arrived on my destination I couldn't stop crying because then, you know, all of it got released, all the emotions and it's come out. I believe I, 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 I thought about it maybe for a couple of weeks and that was the end of it. You know, every now and then 
I remember it, but that's about it. When we are talking about people who wake up in the middle of the night and don't dare to get back to sleep again, when we are talking about people who are shaking and are suddenly experiencing like heart palpitations and mind you for everybody this can be different but they 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 are restless 24 7 and they are seeing that one image over and over and over again well then you know this is big trouble so when we know people are experiencing trauma as in trauma which won't just go away the best way to help them deal with it is to is to actually handle it straight away now here's the thing if you don't have someone who is that quick they make a dis dis uh, distinction so there's the distinction between the people who need it straight away and of course other people who still need it but they're already sort of overdue so it doesn't make any difference whether they are treated straight away or not that's not good by the way but waiting lists here are i believe well they are up to nine months and in reality it might even be up to over a year maybe over up to two years so the lady i normally am is in with <laughs> goes goes so well today the lady who's usually here with me chica joe uh, some of you may have noticed it um she she has suffered trauma multiple times well i'll let her explain a little bit about it more but as a result she's very tired most of the day which means that she falls asleep at random times and this is the thing and i've talked and worked with multiple people who are experiencing trauma you know uh, after a cycle especially when you get into the deep sleep that's when all the emotions come to the surface and it doesn't necessarily mean that they know what is going on they might not even remember it but the result is is that they wake up and they cannot sleep anymore the choice is easily made between not sleeping and having to sleep waking up completely distressed and in panic well no one wants to wake up in panic and so at some point it's like i can't sleep anymore because they, they won't get into that deep sleep because they know what's going to happen and your brain has this awesome way of protecting you and by the time they do sleep seven to eight hours a night then you know something is really wrong and usually they don't come out of it very well when sleeping seven to eight hours um at a stretch so getting back to trauma and ptsd people experiencing trauma they usually they don't they don't talk about it you know it's like oh let's not whine about it you know let's be a good girl or be a good boy and we just go on i mean let's face it that's what we have been brought up brought up with especially the generation who was raised straight after the war and of course the generation that experienced the war so ptsd and all related to it there wasn't much known when it came to PTSD and the lasting effects of it. And I don't know about you, but it seems lately that I've been talking to a lot of people 
you are actually suffering suffering from PTSD and might not even know it themselves. So I actually referred quite a few people to a therapist or a psychologist who can deal with PTSD. Well, for those who don't know, uh, a psychologist and a psych psych so and <laughs> psychiatrist. So that's yeah. I'm sorry, the the, the word is um, so different compared to how I normally pronounce it that I know what it looks like, but when I say it, that's it's a little bit harder. Um, so. The psychologist is the one who gives the treatment and then the, 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 the brother or the sister is the one who gives the medication. Psychiatrist, that's the word. <laughs> yeah, you may experience that every now and then. It's just like, you know, when, when things which are normal in day-to-day -day conversations, when I start to think about it, it's called brain fog then it, it, it just gets a little bit harder. So bear with me when that happens. And maybe it's even funny for you um, seeing it. I mean, uh, I can see the fun of, in it, but well, that's me. Anyway, uh, when we talk about therapists, there are therapists who do cer give certain therapies which are related to EMDR. Um, I suppose there are psychologists who can give EMDR when they are trained for it, but it's usually the therapists who give therapy and hence certain training. So EMDR is eye movements, EM, D, uh, desensitization and reprocessing. So normally, most people know it is, is, is in, you go literally, there, there's a light, follow the light. Well, I'll say this one thing, don't do it, it's not going to work on me. So for people like me, there are also, there's also the possibility of sound, and then there's the possibility of hands. And what they're doing is they are making sure that both halves of the brain are working at the same time and they do not know how it works specifically but the emotion involved with the whole trauma is being diminished well recently i heard about something else too which is called itr instinctual trauma response uh, which works towards repairing and retraining the brain's amygdala and rewiring neurotransmitters to help or reduce interrupt PTSD triggers. And that's probably the most important word of the day, triggers. And that's the one thing I didn't mention before. So when I said insight in an idea around trauma, um, the trigger is the main word in everything. So people always say when you've experienced something severe, as in trauma, you need to get back into the saddle straight away. For instance, when driving, don't park your car, but keep driving. And I don't mean necessarily that same day, but as, but maybe the next day, but don't wait for like a week, that's, that's not going to happen. Now, of course, there are those unfortunate ones who, for some reason, get back in the car and then, boom, they get an even, they, they have an even bigger accident with their car. And I don't know why it is, but some things happen. And I, I guess that most of us who have been on the highway frequently, frequently have been in one or more car accidents, some worse than the other one. Um, but it's not about needing to tap the brake and hitting the other car. It's when you are facing death 
that's when it gets so scary. So when you are spinning around on the highway and you're looking in the eyes of the truck driver in the opposite direction, and then fortunately your car <laughs> goes another 180 degrees and you end up on um, what you, I believe, call is the elbow lane. Yeah, some words are really different from Dutch compared to English. Uh, oh, you call the shoulder. That's it. It's the shoulder. Um, that's when you know. That's that's when you you come out of it. You know, alive, and your car may be damaged. But what you have experienced is literally at that moment, like, okay, I could have died. Maybe you even had those flashes in front of your eyes of what was going to happen. Those are the things which usually keep haunting you. And that's why it's so important to make a distinction between one and the other. What I have noticed though, is that a lot of people, they do not realize that they have PTSD. So when I'm talking to them and you know, I heard the same things. I want to sit in that corner over there because I want to be able to see everyone. Mm, that's a sign. That's not normal behavior. When people say like, um, yeah, I want to come up with some other examples. I'll come up with some other examples in, in, in a little while. Well, this sleep, the one thing that I mentioned about sleep, that's a very good one. When people are dealing with sleep disorders, there's more to it. And I'm not talking about the sleep disorders because you are telling yourself, I need to sleep, I need to sleep, I need to sleep. And then of course your brain thinks, oh, I need to stay awake. Uh, for one thing, the word, everything negative so the word not doesn't isn't recognized that's a basic rule um, you also visualize being awake and that's what your brain picks up on so big chance you won't be sleeping at all it's also the panic attacks that people experience and that's another thing do we know when people have panic attacks? So sometimes it's very obvious. And, you know, it's one of those things which can happen in, in narrow spaces when you cannot go somewhere. And it might be in public transportation, for instance. But yeah, people can feel their, their heart is palpitating and they, they have trouble breathing. And you can tell, you can tell they're not feeling good and they are scared. But there are also, for those who have been dealing with trauma for most of their lives, and yes, that's possible, they normally know how to hide it very well. And that's a major problem. Because they don't tell you know, if we observe them, we might know something is wrong because they're not as attentive as normally, or they all of a sudden might break down. So one of my clients, I would usually tell them, tell, tell the people surrounding him, like, okay, if you want to talk him, to him and I'm not there in the room, fine by me, but know this. If he, for some reason, is going to sit down on the floor, then I'll let him sit down because that means that he's having a panic attack. And it's either that or he's going to lay down flat on the floor and he's losing consciousness. What he also told me, and I've been working with him some time, so my purpose here is not to treat him. My purpose here is to help him lead his life as normal as possible and to see how he can return back to normal. So I actually have uh, 
a couple of, of roles in my life. So for those who know, um, I, I have been in the IT for two decades. So I'm used to having communication between several parties, um, whether it's as a buyer or as a seller, or as a client, client or a supplier. But I also have been trained as a therapist. So yes, I am a licensed therapist, a coach, a counselor, and well, and nowadays I also guide people. It's, you know, my passion is to give people a voice on when they cannot voice themselves, I might step in. And sometimes I do so by actually getting on the phone for people and, you know, maybe even talking between uh, father and daughter or between say a uh, local company and a client so just to to make them understand one another because if there's something i've learned especially dealing with a ankle with an ankle which was damaged experienced trauma um, but wasn't treated the way it should have been i had to learn to speak up and to speak out when people didn't agree with me or better said, when I didn't agree with them and knew that they had given up on the search. So knowing that frustration, I've made it my life's work to make sure that people do learn to speak up, to speak out and, and, and share their voice with the world. Because otherwise they turn inwards and inwards that usually leads to either well, it, it, it turns to numbing yourself. And the question is, how do we do it? Some do it with foods, some do it with boots, some use some powdery substances, you know, there are, and, and some others use razor blades. <laughs> there are so many things you can do to actually numb yourself and, and take away that emotional pain. And that's where we get back to the trauma again, because Lots of people do not know how to deal with that trauma. So like I said, it's important to get back in the game again, straight away, when that's possible. We don't want to let the fear get a hold of you. Now, here's the thing. When things are happening repetitive, that's going to be a bigger problem because what are people experiencing the moment it happens again? So here's the difference. So when I go to the physical therapist, they use, and I go there twice a week, they, husband and wife, usually rearrange my, the bones in my wrist. And I can tell you there are a lot of little bones in here and it can hurt immensely. Well, um, this is the thing. I always forget what it feels like. It's the same when they are doing, uh, when, when they are working on my feet, you know, and something happens, for instance, with a toenail, or it's the same with having on, on, undergone surgery. <laughs> and uh, oh, wait, that's the pain that was, <laughs> that was connected with surgery. I always forget it. I don't know about you, but th those are things that I tend to forget. I tend to forget what pain is like. And that's why they also talk about pain and chronic pain. So cr chronic pain is like hardwired in your brain and you feel it even when the cause of the pain isn't there. And I guess that's to a degree, a sort of good comparison with people suffering from uh, post-traumatic stress disorder because that's what PTSD is. Uh, sometimes they talk about PTSS instead of disorder, they say syn syndrome. Um, when it keeps popping up, when you keep seeing what has happened and no matter what you do, you cannot get away from it. And it's so ever present that it literally blocks everything you're doing. 
than uni treatment. It starts though, that's something I believe was talking to people. So when it comes to the things, I call them quick fixes, not necessarily because then you're over and done with it, but it's like a patch on a wound. The wound itself is not healed, but the patch at least helps against all the blood, you know, streaming everywhere. And when and when you, you when when they talk to other people, so say you are the one who's traumatized and you start talking to people, you really live it. And the whole thing of this trauma, which is literally ingrained in your brain, is that emotions and effects get separated from one another. So the goal is to no longer be the one experiencing the accident, the suicide from someone else or whatever it is, the car accident, um, someone mistreating them, but instead being able to go through it so much of course, with a safety net. This is not something you want to just practice at home. But when it's too much, you want that safety net and then you do something else, which makes the brain totally forget what it was doing. So you want to give your brain orders, orders it cannot ignore. Orders like go up and down the stairs, count from 10 to one. Uh, if you can talk multiple languages, do the multiple languages, start singing a song, whatever it is, do eye movements, you know, go from left to right, up and down, you know, diagonal, whatever. Those are the things which help distract the brain because we are talking not just about a physical something because the, the physical trauma is in what might have been um, hurt that that probably has been healed unless it's something that, that couldn't be healed at all but normally it will be healed long before the mental wounds have healed and because the people and maybe i'm not saying it's precisely the way they experience it but especially when you've gone through multiple traumas and i don't know why it is but all of us have experienced trauma at some point or another but there are people out there who have suffered trauma to a very different degree and trauma can be being bullied at school not once but multiple years of end um Trauma could have been that you, as a little kid, had to take care of one or both your parents. And it's not the job as a, as a kid to take care of the adults. But I can tell you when that happens, that's when you get traumatized for life. And a, a lot of people who now are in their 80s, close to the 90s, they experienced World War II. They are traumatized because they were kids and as kids, they had to take care mostly of their mothers that stayed behind, you know, they had to fight in the war or back then they had to work on, on the rails of the train, um, whatever it was. And that's why my heart breaks for the people from the Ukraine because they, are actually being traumatized right now. I mean, just imagine getting back in your home, in your house, and <laughs> it's missing the walls and all the memories, and things are broken. It's, and basically everything you had isn't worth anything anymore. But of course it can even get even worse. And that's when you have to flee your country and it can get even worse when 
young girls and women get taken. And I'm not going to say what's going to happen next, but you can probably imagine that. And there's a word for it. And the first word, you know, and the second word is trafficking. So that means something is happening over and over and over again. And what the brain does is it's trying to come up with a coping mechanism. So I'm getting back to the triggers. Something happens, you see someone coming, the guy is scary or the woman is scary. And you're like, oh my God, no. And instantly you want to go elsewhere. Well, that's usually a trigger. And to the trigger, there's a mind, there, there's a, a response from the brain. And you know, like we have the fight, flight or freeze reaction. Something similar happens in the brain too. There is a survival mechanism. And especially when something happens between the age of zero and seven, and we are not capable of rationalizing it, thinking about it, what's happening. Just imagine that your favorite pet just died and no one told you what had happened. That's an example. And, and you keep, just keep looking, you keep looping for your pet. You know, the rabbit, Christmas, all that stuff. You keep looking, where, where is it? So if you ever hear a song about Fluffy, the rabbit, and it's Christmas time and it's a Dutch song, then you know what it's about. Uh, by the way, he was called Fluffy, uh, not Fluffy. And Fluffy is from flapping its ears. <laughs> um, getting back to, to being traumatized. The panic attacks, they take over you. They take over part of the brain that is there to, to protect you. So people might start doing games. They might have something, a beverage next to them, or they might not. And it might be completely filled up. And then eight hours later, it's like, oh, oh, something happened. What time is it actually? Oh, I can't remember. And then, oh, hmm, it's empty. Well, I can't remember drinking it. That's because, and this is an extreme example, they had a full blown eight hour panic attack. So the good thing is they, were still functioning, even though they weren't present, um, but they, they didn't sustain any injuries because of the brain just taking over. When the brain is not allowed to take over, this can cause major headaches. So that's also one of the symptoms when you don't want to go there and someone is telling you go there anyway. Um, and at some point, the brain might just shut down entirely, saying, you know, enough is enough, and <laughs> we're not going there. I mean, um, I don't know much about this topic when it comes to split personalities, but what we do know about split personalities, or at least what I do know about split personalities, is they are there to make sure that the main personality, so the one who lives in the body and who's normally there talking to you and me, is actually being shielded from what's going on, the traumatic event, so to call it, and is taking over. And depending on the amount of trauma, it can last, the, the, and, and especially when it lasts a long time, it can be up to, I think, not just dozens, I think over a hundred um, can, can be present. So all different characters, boys, girls, men, women, some three years old, some seven years old, some adults. It's, it's amazing what the brain can do. But in this case, when someone is traumatized, we need to rewire the brain. 
And thank God there is something called neuroplasticity. So we can actually teach the brain to do things differently. And that's why it's so important when someone is traumatized to actually be there as quickly as possible. So recently I learned something else and I didn't know this, but when you are dealing with Crohn's disease, so when you're dealing with inflammations, which get triggered by stress, you are not allowed to go to that one event, which is, which is so emotional. So you're not allowed to go and relive the trauma over and over and over and over again until at some moment you can remember it and look at it without the tears flooding down your face. And that's, well, a challenge would be an understatement, but I didn't know. So someone recently told me and I was like, yeah, that's a good question. Why didn't you go to trauma therapy before? And that's when she explained it to me and I was like, okay, I get it. I didn't know, but it's one of those things which is important to know. And there's so much to know about the brain and what it can do. It's, it's so immensely interesting. But when I talk to people and they are in panic mode, it's about seeing what can they handle and what can they do. So when someone still can talk to me, I can actually give them assignments like, okay, you know, jump, 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 jump up high up in the air. And I usually try and, and link it to something funny, like a song or whatever it is. So, and, and which they know and which makes them smile. So I'll say, ah, oh, you're going to do a frog jump. And you know, it's the way you talk and all that stuff which helps them snap out of it. So it's not that same moment. So snapping out of it, it might not be the best expression, but you get what I'm saying. And then especially when you get to bring something else to do as well, like um, just citing something, you know, like mathematics or I don't know, the, the <laughs> some song of some sort, and then next do the epic do, 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 do the eye movements or whatever it is breathing basically movement talk talk to yourself talk to others and um what was it again breathing movement and i'm sorry i forgot the third one self-talk breathing and movement oh i had the three already um, that, that's usually what helps, what helps. It helps you to get away from whatever it is you're stuck at when you are dealing with something and you're like, and you're in a loop. That's probably the best way to describe it. People with PTSD, they are stuck in a loop. Only they don't know when the loop, st loop starts. At some point it may end, but they never know when it starts. And most of those people are survivors. They are still there. And that's largely the reason I believe that we don't see it as, as outsiders. So it's because people are telling me certain things that I can easily combine all things like, oh, hang on, you told me this had happened. And now you're telling me you, you, you have trouble sleeping. So how long are you sleeping at night? You know, all those things. And then of course, when they, they also mention panic attacks, then it's bingo. Oh, okay. I can safely assume you've got PTSD. For how long didn't you sleep? And we're not talking about a few nights again. We're talking about something that's going on for a lot longer and which has an impact of you, on you which is not rationally explainable because of what happens at that, in that moment. So getting back to it, 
if you know someone whose behavior has changed and they you know they've been to some sort of traumatic event and they start to tell you that all of a sudden they don't feel safe anymore they experience something which is like a panic attack and then a lot of trouble sleeping and especially they are relieving a certain image and usually that's the last image they have seen and we can talk about loved ones dying friends partners uh, siblings those are very very traumatic events when it's unexpected when you don't know is it going to happen or is it not going to happen especially those who have threatened to kill themselves more often and who didn't succeed when they do succeed i can tell you and especially when you have been involved every time that that then something is happening to you and how much can one take that's of course the question how much can you take but if you do know such a person make sure they go see a therapist who specialized in trauma for some or most people i don't know even know if it's for most people but for a lot of people emdr works well i told you about the new thing i heard about which is itr the instinctual trauma response um whatever it is your brain needs rewiring in the past few decades when I became a therapist and a coach, I, I did a lot of hypnotherapy and not the one where you have the clock and it goes from left to right. Um, what it basically does is it, it numbs the brain, it gives it, it a boring task. And because it gets a boring task, the subconscious mind where everything is stored, one way or another, for us, not necessarily rationally, unless you know your triggers and then you know, okay, if this happens, then that's going to happen. So I know that there are certain triggers for me which can make me go like, hey. So one of the things is I don't, and I don't know if you see this, but I don't like being closed off of the world. I always want to know if people are in near me or not. So when there's someone in the house I trust, I'll probably um, put it in both ears. But when I'm alone, I most certainly won't. And, you know, just recently I got these bone conductors. So they are not going in my ear, but they're going uh, just in front of my ear. On my temples, well, it's not even my temples. It's, it's literally on the jaw. So it's, there's a part near the, near the ear where on the jaw, and that gives me a feeling of safety because I can hear what's going on around me. So when you talk to people and you know something is going on, like I said, get them to the therapist. I'm talking about the hypnotherapy again. Uh, the hypnotherapy what it does is it, it lets you go to that one situation ahead of time you've come up with a safety word and that safety word that's what you use that's your safe place you can go to and next you do something else you know you literally get your brain to do something totally different and if people feel up for it then you do it again and you measure it from a one to 10 and then the, the, the number is supposed to be going down it i believe that most methods are not very differently it's it's all related to get emotion away from the trauma and getting to for you to look at it as bystander um so when you know someone who's panicking and here's the thing and that's hard so you want to give them space first of all 
if they can get to themselves, that's that's ideal. And, but in some circumstances, you don't want to wait, so you want to comfort them. But always see what they need first. Talk to them and get and find out what is it that they need. And then next, when they are in a surrounding that's I'll, I'll say desensitized, where there are not many stimuli. So there are not a lot of sounds and other things going on. That's when they can, you know, the trigger is gone. And that's why you have to get them away from whatever the trigger is. The trigger is gone and they'll get back to themselves again. And of course, the talking to them helps. Give them something to drink, a little bit of water. Then the, the, the body is doing something physically. You know, it's all those little things that basically help. I can actually go on for hours on land because I know so many people who have been traumatized, but I, I want to end with something positive. I've had numerous clients and usually I'm the one who's at the back end. So I don't do EMDR, I know how it works, but I don't do it because I haven't had enough training to do it. Sometimes I might do something which is linked to hypnotherapy, meditation, uh, especially certain meditation where you use um, different frequencies. So with meditation, you can also do a lot of healing at the same time, work with intonation, all that stuff. But normally I'm the one when people have gone there, I'm the safety net because a lot of things can come to the surface. And this is the thing. When you go through to the surface, and usually the days after, weeks after, something will pop up, will come to the surface. And if you're alone, that, that could be really troublesome. So that's why you always need the safety net, family, friends. And in, in my case, case I, I do it too. Um, and you know, people do get better. People do, they, they, they get some sessions and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I do feel better. You know, I, I wake up and life is good again. And oh, I didn't know that was, this was possible. So that's, that's the good part of it. And like I said, if you ever get <laughs> you, you, you run into someone who's panicking or is drunk for that matter. And this might be a really weird comparison, but see if you can get them to drink some water. So actually start moving, walking around, do something boring, like getting a glass, being fixated on that glass of water instead of whatever was going on in their mind. And then maybe go sing happy birthday together or whatever it is, and hear some laughter because it is so silly. But it's those little things which at that moment can just snap them out of it being that band-aid. So hopefully I got you a little bit more insight on what it means. If there are some people who want to share their experiences on here you're always welcome most of the people don't want to um when they're from the netherlands well it's midnight here it's way past midnight actually it's two at night so they won't come on right now um other people don't want to know because they feel like oh people will think i'm so sad and they need to take care of me and i don't want that so that's a completely different reaction. And then there's those people who um, want to be there, but they just can't make it, you know, schedules, all that stuff. Um, and that can happen too. But if you want to share your story and talk about it, then please know you're welcome, of course, when you're serious and not like <laughs> the other one was here before uh, making 
being disrespectful. But the most important thing, if you are experiencing trauma and you are reliving nightmares or that, that one moment again and again and again, find a therapist, talk to your family, doctor, GP or whatever you call it and see if you can get some support. But also talk about it with friends. It's important that in a place where you feel safe, you are allowed and capable of sharing your emotions. And it's okay if the tears come strolling down your face. I mean, they are allowed to stream down your face because it's emotional and no one will make fun of you. But I understand you want to do it in a safe environment. So um, go talk and find someone. Because if you start to use sleep medication for the sake of sleeping and you don't stop it in time or you use other medication to numb yourself or you use certain substances, it's going to be hard to get away from that. And you know, Pandora's box, it might be closed, but it's called Pandora's box for a reason. It wants to open. And when everything come, comes out, ooh, that's not very pretty. So the sooner you are capable of dealing with it, even when it makes you mad, even when it makes you sad, the better it is for you and the sooner the healing can start. So no, you're not on your own. You're not alone out there. And yes, I'm aware there are way there are absolutely not enough people right now to be able to help you out with this. But this is a first start to help you get going.